Hey, good morning, good morning, everybody. It's Hollywood here. Hollywood Bliss 2911 personal training in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, I am a NAS National Academy of Sports Medicine certified personal trainer. Um, guys, I um, am a corrective exercise specialist, which means that if you have a muscle imbalance, um, if you have been cleared by a doctor and are rehabilitating surgery or an injury, you can come to my gym, attain services from me, and I can help you move pain-free. Um, so, that's what I wanted to talk about something today. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of legs today, guys, and I'll get some video, and I'm sorry I've been slacking on that. Um, to my subscribers, um, welcome in new subscribers. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just hit me up in the box. You guys have still been so kind um, and so faithful to this channel from the very beginning. Um, and like I say, the guy that I was talking about... Um, that was going to come on board and help me with the social media. That guys, he actually reached out to me. Before I ever reached out to him, he actually reached out to me um, to get some help with his personal training. Or, or to get some personal training. To get some help with his fitness goals, guys. Um, so, how about that? Um, anyway, uh, so I'm headed to the gym right now, um, and I'm going to meet up with Carrie, and we're going to do some studying. Guys, right now, I have been um, studying to retake the test for um, my corrective exercise. Um, you know, every two years with NASM, you have to do continue, continuing education. Your CEUs, for those of you that have to do that in the medical field and whatnot, um, and that's what I'm working on now. And it's, uh, the information is very, very extensive. Um, you know, all the things that I'm learning, um, some of them are practical, uh, but a lot of them are really just get going more in depth in what that I'm already certified, what I've already, what I already know, um, what I already practice at my gym. On the corrective exercise, it just goes in depth, um, you know, about myofascial release, uh, you know, knees, hips, back, um, that kind of thing. Truth be known, guys, it, if everybody would do corrective exercise for five minutes a day, we wouldn't have as many knee surgeries, back surgeries, and hip surgeries as we do. Um, and nobody that I've talked to that's had any of the, those things done or is considering getting those things done um, has ever had um, any advice on doing corrective exercise um, or suggestions that suggest that they do corrective exercise first and see if that stops the problem. I'm not going to go into depth with that. I just want to make a short video um, and let you guys know um, what's going on. I mean, I'm still getting prepping for the bodybuilding show. Now it's getting ready to get pretty intense. Um, I'm taking on a whole lot more work, and I'll be working late. So if I work late, um, I'll probably just stay here in Cleveland overnight, just wake up in the morning and do it again. Um, it's a complete change in lifestyle, guys. Well, you know, um, and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to ease into it. Um, it looks like it's something that's, once everything's in place, it's going to happen overnight. Um, but anyway, uh, we're uh, roughly 22 weeks out of the show, um, uh, the show in Atlanta, um, so that it put us about 25, um, outside, 25 weeks out of the show to California. Um, anyhow, guys, I was, uh, just down here at the gas station, and I thought it was kind of funny, you know, um, this gas station, uh, over here in Budawal, where I live in Tennessee, um, uh, it's right by where I used to work. And, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, I left. I worked at it was a, a factory job. Um, well, 
Yeah, I guess you can call it a factory job. Um, you know, we definitely we assemble trucks. Um, you know, we built <clears throat> tow trucks. Um, you know, so I mean, it was, there was a lot of fabrication basically that went on. You know, as well as you know, there was assembly of parts. You know, all the mechanical and hydraulic parts. Um, you know, that go to a unit that mounts on a truck uh, to tow cars. They actually invented um, tow trucks here in. in Tennessee, Chattanooga, this part, see I live in the greater Chattanooga area, um, but anyhow, it's all Chattanooga, except Cleveland, now I'm driving to Cleveland, um, you know, which is, you know, 10, 15 miles north of Budawa, which is north of Chattanooga, but anyway, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking because, you know, I saw uh, one of my... Uh, well, I saw my old supervisor, the guy I worked for for eight years out there. Um, great guy. I knew him before I went to work out there and ended up going to work for him. Um, hard to work for sometimes. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, you know, push and shove, I guess. He he put up with a lot of shit um, out of me. Uh, anyway, but... Uh, so, you know, they've got all these parts and everything laying out, and I, um, you know, I had ideas about, you know, how to do things there, you know, build those trucks one at a time, because they would try to take parts, uh, like, you know, they, they say, for instance, they're building a boom. Well, they'd line up 10 booms and start, you know, um, fitting them up and putting them together, um, right? Well, you know, they'd get one side fitted up and welded out just one side of the boom. Well, hell, you were waiting on the whole truck, you know. So instead of building a boom, subframe, a wheel lift, um, you know, a crossbar, uh, and, and, and stuff like that, instead of building everything that you need for the one truck before you get ready to mount it on the truck, they build what you need for one thing, one side of one thing um, or whatever for a truck um, you know and it'd take them three days because you know you'd build a boom for ten trucks you still didn't have one truck built um, and you know and I said that to them and they are kind of like oh man that makes no sense <laughs> you know so you know I just kind of thought something wasn't adding up on that deal um, but anyway, you know, he came in here um, to the gym to take a look at it. Because uh, where I contracted at used to be, you know, um, those guys' old gym. Well, they moved down the road. Um, but anyhow, um, he came in there and he said, hey, man, you know. Um, and I always, another thing that they're doing now, um, they started doing that, building them one at a time. Um, and he come tell me, he said, hey, man, they're building them one at a time now. Just like you said, <laughs> which makes sense, man. But um, another thing uh, that I always wanted them to do that they never would do um, was so when you, when you got parts out, um, you know, um, after they got all wet fitted up, welded up, and everything, you know, they paint them. They take them through there and they blast them and paint them, um, and uh, you know, shop blast them and paint them, blast the steel, and you know, so they could paint them and everything. They paint them. Um, you know, and, and they'd come out, they'd come out there, you know, to the yard or whatever, out on the patio, um, where they brought their parts, right, and I'd get them ready and, um, you know, load everything up on a fork truck and, um, you know, move all that stuff around and bring it in for these guys to put, for the mechanics to put them together. Um, and, uh... <laughs> Uh, you know, I always complained and said, man, the, you know, the paint shop ought to be doing that because when I first started, there was a boy that worked there, J.B., Jonathan Brown, good friend of mine, um, used to fight tough man with me back in the day. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a Wing Chun practitioner, if any of you guys know what Wing Chun is, which is a deadly uh, form of martial arts uh, that was created by women for women to protect themselves uh, from getting raped uh, in the ancient times. So, I mean, you know, at street value, it was like, you know, throat punching, you know, eye gouging, um, you know, other things 
um, that are pretty rough on a guy, you know, who would try to assault somebody. And um, they were very effective. But, you know, some really effective uh, punching and stuff. Um, you know, and so he, um, he, he, uh, you know, he did that. And he was in some tough man to put, you know, to put his uh, techniques uh, to the test. Um, but anyhow, yeah, so he used to do it, and he'd bring in some of the parts, and, you know, they argued with me, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. Um, they never did that, you know. They'd get mad at me, um, you know, because of the way I am, because, you know, I'm so, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe they think maybe kind of pushy or whatever, but they'd get on to me about it, and then they'd end up making me do it. You know, you don't like to do it yourself. Um, and so, um, you know, what they ended up doing, um, was, uh, getting it to where the paint guy was doing that. So the guy that was doing what I was doing, all he has to do is bring in the hardware. Um, you know, he doesn't have to bring in the weldments, the, the welded parts. Um, all he has to do is bring in the hardware, um, that they used to operate the thing. Um, so everything that I thought in my mind, um, you know, over all those years that I never did it, um, and they never would let it go down, <laughs> they're doing that now. Um, so I actually manifested, uh, what they're doing now. Um, so, um, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. And if they had done things the way, um, that were, that made sense, that were easier for me, I'd probably still be working there because it was a great place to work. Um, you, you know, excellent pay, um, better benefit, better insurance than, um, you know, you can find, um, anymore. And those guys that own the place will spend their money, um, to keep the insurance, um, as best as it could possibly be, um, cause it's their company too. Um, you know, and I'm talking about, you know, so my girlfriend was a far, is a pharmacist, um, and, uh, she, um, you know, she told me, and she's a pharmacist and has insurance through CVS. And, you know, she told me, she said, man, you don't find insurance like this anymore. She said, this is old Detroit Union insurance. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a great place to work. So I'm glad they changed things up and made it a little easier on that guy who, who, um, did the work, does the work that I did, um, that I worked so hard at for so many years. Um, when they finally figured out how hard I actually was working and what it was all about. Um, but anyway, so everything happens for a reason, but I'm here now in Hollywood Bliss. Um, and I have got two of my very most favorite clients here. And actually, you guys, I want you to meet somebody. This girl in here was one of the founders of Hollywood Bliss. Um, and she was the second person here. Um, and she has lost like 160 pounds. She's a total badass. And so is this guy with her. I just want you guys to meet her. I see. What's up? What's up? Hey, are you guys, um, is everything cool with the fans? Because they're going to look at the air conditioner. Um, but I'm going to tell you the deal with the air conditioner. And, Hanny, you know this. It doesn't really get that cool anyway. You know what I'm saying? It never did. Not unless they just um, put a new unit. Anyway, I want to introduce you to Hannah. She was number two here. And this is Wes. This is the tough guy that hangs out with her and keeps up with her in the gym. But uh, she was number two here. Came to me. She wanted to lower her blood pressure and lose one pant size, right? Yeah, and so she's also 150 pounds, and you see her in here pushing big iron. Anyway, I love you guys. Like, subscribe, and share. All right?